Hello friends and welcome back for another episode of Indie Impressions, my name is Nick, and today we're going to be checking out Gun Gods, a free downloadable game from uh, developer Vlambeer, who you might know from such awesome games as Super Crate Box or maybe Ridiculous Fishing, among others. Uh, it is a first-person shooter, just in the more, more pure, old-school sense, sort of like a uh, Wolfenstein 3D-style game. And the premise is that we're going to be doing uh, some first-person shooting uh, to do with Venusian rap, I suppose. That's at least the, you know, rap on Venus has something to do with it. And uh, there's some sort of maybe Illuminati conspiracy going on, or I'm not exactly sure, but this game has a freaking awesome soundtrack, is extremely fun to play, and is just really quite accessible. So for anybody out there who's enjoyed a few first-person shooters in the, you know, the more old-school, more pure form, I think you're gonna get a kick out of this one. I certainly did. And I did spend uh, probably about a half an hour with it already just to uh, get sort of accustomed to what was going on. And uh, so we're actually gonna be going through some levels I've already played. This is not exactly my typical indie impression style, uh, but in this game it was sort of necessary uh, for a reason I won't get into. So, let us jump into, this is our level select screen here. Uh, as you can see, the structure is such that there are four chapters, and each one of them is made up of three levels and a challenge level, and if you unlock enough of the pyramids or triangles or whatever we're calling them uh, by finding secrets and speedrunning through the level, you unlock the challenge at the end. So I've only gotten that for the first chapter, and there's one of those for each one of those going down, and I believe each chapter chapter unlocks a new weapon, uh, but I think I've gotten all of them by this chapter, so I don't know. Anyway, we're going to start from the beginning, uh, run through it, and uh, I will do my best to not try and talk over the entire amazing soundtrack, so you can maybe hear a little bit of it, but unfortunately that's not going to happen on the title screen, so I will catch you uh, in the first level. Alright, so here we go. We've escaped from jail, and we are armed with only our pistol and a knife, which I don't know if that's the pistol turning into the knife, or I guess we're just pulling out our butterfly knife on the fly. Uh, and you can tell pretty quickly uh, there is not any kind of mouse look. You know, we're only operating, like I said, in a sort of a Wolfenstein 3D sense, uh, where we can only look around in a circular fashion. Uh, controls are very responsive, as you would imagine, given, you know, so few things going on. There's no reload or anything, it's just strictly fire your gun and move. That's really all you gotta worry about. You can, of course, change weapons too, but I don't have any other weapons right now, so all I have is my knife at this point. Uh, and I will do my best here to try to requisition something better. Uh, and keep my eyes open for secrets, which happen to usually come in the form of secret doors. And let's just knife all these guys if we can. Uh, it's not as easy as it might seem. They move around a whole bunch. I don't know what exactly they are. They're some sort of wacky creatures with guns, some prison guards or something. And there's the, uh, the captain prison guard who, uh, usually has a shotgun, I believe. And I just want to go ahead and go back for a second and just make sure I didn't miss out on any secret walls or anything, because, uh, unlike in Wolfenstein where you can, like, push the walls around, in this one you usually just walk straight through them, so... Uh, I want to also make sure I get as much ammo as possible, and it doesn't seem like I really missed anything. So things start out pretty simple. You know, as would often be the case in most first-person shooters, there are only a handful of enemies. Uh, things certainly do escalate, and I've actually even encountered a boss. There might be actually more than one boss, but we will uh, maybe see about that. And that was the end of the first level. Uh, my time was not especially great, I didn't really run through that with much haste. Uh, so I only ended up getting one pyramid there, I didn't even get all the items, so I guess I missed a bunch of stuff. So on we go to level 2, where we instantly are awarded a... Uh, double-barreled super shotgun from Doom 2, essentially. I believe that might actually be the sprite from it, but I don't know 100%. It just looks very much like it, uh, with some of the, uh, like the, the colors dithered a bit. Uh, there is one thing I want to mention that's the, uh, firing of the guns in this feels, like, really good. For whatever reason, it's really punchy, and it's really responsive. And that goes a long way to making a game like this be extremely playable. I didn't even need to shoot that guy, but I did, because I'm a big jerk. Uh, so, you know, I mean, if any of you developers out there are watching and want to make a first-person shooter, uh, Vlambeer did a lot of things right when it comes to this one, and even though it's very simplistic, it still has a good degree of, you know, entertainment value just coming from the fact that, you know, it's so playable, it just feels good. You know, people talk about game feel, I think this one has it. Uh, you know, you don't need especially amazing graphics if you've got a game that just feels right. And I think that is the case here, so... Uh, let us continue on and see if we can find our way out of this next jail level. There is, uh, you know, a bit of diversity in environments as we get out of this one spot. 
Uh, we'll be going to other places like uh, there's sewers filled with green goo. Uh, there's like some sort of a high-rise fancy apartment building, and I don't know what the third chapter is. It's just sort of like subterranean caves or something. I don't know, it probably says it somewhere, I just didn't read all the text. So I'm not doing very well at finding secrets. Uh, there definitely are some around here, and I'm positive I've even seen some of them before, and now I'm just not remembering where they are. Uh, so I'm going to continue to walk into walls here. Not much luck. Uh, also, different tracks, I believe, on each level. If not each level, almost each level. Oh, and you'll notice also a corpse down there that we'll see what those guys are on the next one. So, 100%, 100%, I got two pyramids for that one. That may, may or may not be better than the last one. And finding the secret, I believe, is how to get all of them. Uh, or speedrunning it, depending, so... Alright, that has been broken. There's another one of those corpses. Uh, I do want to go this way, though, because I noticed there was some ammo. Thought I just heard an imp revving up from Doom. But probably not. Alright. Good spread fire on this shotgun definitely helps a lot with clearing out these guys, but I don't want to squander my ammo advantage right now. So I will try my best to move around. It's kind of hard to target them. I don't have a reticle or anything. And without mouse look, I'm so used to doing that. It's sort of a little awkward for me, but it's not like it's hard. It's just like I gotta get used to it. Alright, get up close, and that definitely helps with targeting. Well, my health is not especially good right now. Uh, excuse me. Oh, a lot of guys in here. No problem, we've got a shotgun for that. Now, it's a slightly different structure the way things go in this game, because usually, in most first-person shooters, you would play the whole game in sort of a linear fashion, uh, but this game sort of promotes its players to handle it in a, a less linear way, in that you can actually jump back uh, between each set of three levels back to the menu, where it actually does do that for you, you don't really have a choice, and you can choose to go... Uh, somewhere else, if you want to maybe play through those same levels again, go for better scores, try to unlock more pyramids or triangles or whatever you want to call them. Or, you could just go forward to the next one or try the challenge, whatever you want to do. Uh, okay, oh, it's you. Dude looks like he's, uh, one of those big beastie guys right from, uh, Super Crate Box, which I think is kind of a sweet shout-out if that is actually intentional. Probably is. Oh, there's a different colored room over here. I have Oh, and I found a wall that I can go through. Neat. And it's got a pyramid in it, so there we go. It's a little confusing once you've gone through a wall and then you're not really sure like where that wall was anymore. I feel like once you go through it, it should just be uh, one-sided transparency thing so you can see back through the other way and then you won't get lost. I used to do that kind of trick when I was making Doom levels all the time. Anyway, so that's going to be the last level of the first chapter. Uh, fairly easy at the beginning, but it definitely escalates as things go. Uh, so I will just skip us right on to the next chapters. You don't really need to see me going through the menus. Alright, so now we're at the sewer entrance. And uh, there will be some new enemies added in as well. Oh, and that guy always takes me off guard. It's just this big old hulking beast man just standing there like nothing's going on. Sometimes he charges you, sometimes he doesn't. I don't know. Okay, there we go. Sometimes I would like to actually look around a little bit, just to sort of see what's going on above me, but you know, it's it's not really that important, it's just sort of like I'm so used to it now. To not have the ability to look up just strikes me as strange sometimes, but it's not like it really was necessary. Especially when there's not anything actually like going on really up there, I just want to have the ability to. Uh, not really a complaint, it's just like, it's weird, that's all. <laughs> Okay, there's a new enemy. Uh, thankfully not all that much more difficult than the hulking beastie man. Uh, big ol' purple eyeball thing shooting- well, maybe not an eyeball, but uh, some sort of a gaping, fangy maw. Who definitely could pose a problem for me. Since he's got projectiles and all that, that guy as well could be a little bit dangerous. Uh, when they get up close and personal, they can do a bit of damage. And they're basically like your analog to Doom's uh, the pink demons, I would assume. The Pinkies. Is that their formal name? I feel like I should know this. I actually read the Doom novels, believe it or not. But I just don't remember. I should just go into the exit instead of just waiting around like I keep doing so I can get more pyramids. That's actually kind of important. Alright, next level. Alright, two guys there. What's going on over here? I like these little uh, scenery decal things going on as well. I think they add a lot of personality. And the fact that the ground is not actually just solid ground for once, it's not really a thing that I've seen too often. 
Uh, especially in a more lo-fi first-person shooter, usually we wouldn't mess with something like that. You know, having the ground be made up of something other than the actual ground. And it's, uh, it adds a bit of character to the environment, I will say. You know, I think they've found the, uh, the perfect spot of, like, how much can you have, like, minimalized or, or minimalistic art design-wise and still have the game have a ton of character to it. Because I feel like no concessions were made, yet, you know, the game doesn't need to look super amazing, like, high-res or anything, and it still gets the point across. And in fact, I think if it looked more high-res, I think it would be less interesting. Uh, I think this strikes a nice balance of art design uh, versus playability, or not that those things have to be at odds with each other, but hopefully you know what I mean. Okay, and we've got a new gun. Looks like we've got our chain gun. One of my very favorite guns of all time, by the way, before the, the rail gun was my jam. Uh, well, before that was probably like the rocket launcher, and then before that was probably the grenade launcher, but I went through a period of time where I was emphatically uh, involved in the uh, minigun scene or chain gun scene, depending on what you call it. I think my favorite chain gun in most any first-person shooter is probably like the one from Turok 1, Turok Dinosaur Hunter, of course, uh, because it had that spin-up. Uh, you might rem oh, random took a shot there through the wall or something, unless there's a dude right behind me, which is entirely possible. It's alright, no big penalty, I respawn with full health and plenty of ammo. Uh, but yeah, I think the, uh, the way that that gun revved up before it started unleashing a hail of bullets, and the fact that you could sort of start to rev it, uh, just by using the trigger, like by holding it for a second without actually, uh, holding it long enough for it to start firing, that was such a nice feeling. And I was always upset that the, uh, the Doom chain gun never had that feeling. Although I am aware that I believe it was Brutal Doom that added, it's a mod of course, added something very similar to that, if not actually that. It's uh, a thing that I absolutely do want to play, actually. Great sound effects, too, by the way, if I haven't commented on that yet. I think everything feels very punchy, like I mentioned earlier. Man, I am taking a ton of damage on this run. I'm going kind of slow as well. Uh, I should probably be trying to plow through these guys before they get a real chance uh, to do any damage to me. It's been a good uh, last few weeks for Twitch shooters. I definitely... Oh, no shotgun ammo. That's real bad for me. Alright. Uh, definitely was one of my favorite genres for a long time, and it possibly still is. And, uh, it's just, there haven't been a ton of, like, good modern ones in recent times. You know, the, uh, the prevalence of very narrative-driven, exposition-driven shooters, it's definitely switched. Uh, it used to be the other way around, and then those game prominence became sort of like the de facto standard for mainstream games. And not that I don't play them, I still occasionally do, but I find these are just way more fun in general. Uh, they're just easier to get into, less... Well, I, I don't think pretentious is the right word, but there's something, maybe a kernel of truth to that in there somewhere. Uh, they're just more fun, just they're easier to just play and just enjoy, and you don't have to think so much. Uh, when I think really the core of what makes a first-person shooter a first-person shooter is the fact that you're just shooting like crazy, you're just you're doing wild stuff. There's a weird texture issue going on up there. Uh, I guess not really a good way to transition from the high ceiling to the low ceiling. It just, like, left it not there at all. This is a little bit awkward. Uh, can I kill this dude? Takes a lot of hits. Anyway, we barely made it through that level. I'm not in a good way for the next level. Unless it resets my health, which it may or may not do. Oh, it does. Alright, that's convenient. I appreciate that a whole bunch. And this is actually our boss level, so I, I have to be pretty careful about how we handle this. Uh, I will go ahead and spoil the boss and how you proceed through it for you guys. But then after that, we'll probably wrap things up. So uh, the boss is this big thing that looks like it's right from the Binding of Isaac or something. And it's got these tentacles, which are actually its eyes on stalks. And if you shoot those eyes on stalks, then it'll wake up its eyes on the actual... Uh, monster, which means you can then actually do damage to them, and I think there's like three cycles of that happening. Okay, that didn't actually work. Uh, what does that boss remind me of? It's like the one of the final bosses from Hyperzone or something, an old SNES game. Or maybe the uh, final boss of Quake could also be the case. Alright, let's wait for this tentacle action to happen again, and then we'll shoot him down. I uh, definitely want to hang out in this little corridor here because you seem way less susceptible to taking damage. Uh, oh, I think, do I have to do a certain amount of damage or is it just do damage? No, it's a certain amount, I guess. 
Okay, did a ton of damage to the boss on that one. And where are they going? There it is. Bam, bam. One more? Sorry, I totally talked over, like, the entirety of the soundtrack in this. <laughs> I didn't intend to do that. I was gonna have a few breaks for breathers, but, uh, the game is totally free, so there's really no reason that you shouldn't go ahead and just go grab it and try it for yourself. Uh, if you're into the style of game, of course, which by now I think you'll probably have a good feeling as to whether or not that's the case. So I ended up with two pyramids on that level. Uh, did okay, but I definitely would go back and revisit all the prior levels and see if I could do better in terms of time and score and all of that. So, I guess we'll wrap up our episode on Gun Gods. Uh, not the longest game per se, but I think you could probably get at least like an hour or two hours out of it. Uh, and the little bit that I've played, you know, I've already probably finished the majority of the game, but I've enjoyed it a whole bunch, so I have no problem thinking I would go back through this whole thing again. Uh, so anyway, with that, let me tell you again, go ahead into the description of this video so you can go ahead and download this for free. Uh, there are also some other links in there, like my social media links, if you want to check out my Facebook or my Twitter, as well as my Twitch page, or of course, indie-impressions.com. Uh, quick place you can go ahead and visit if you want to see all the other episodes in the series, over 500 and nearing 550, actually, uh, other videos that I've made for the series. And they're all sortable and categorized over there, so if you want to go browse through stuff, that's the quickest way to do it. Uh, and of course, uh, feel free to come back again tomorrow. New episodes are every single day. Please do leave any comments you can. I'd love to hear your opinions of this. What do you think about Twitch shooters in particular? Have you enjoyed any in recent times? I'm thinking Painkiller probably comes to mind. Serious Sam. Um, uh, there's definitely two or three other ones. I even kissed Psycho Circus, which is not really modern anymore, but like uh, early 2000s, wasn't that? Something like that. Maybe late 90s? I don't remember, but it was, it was old. Anyway, that's going to do it again, guys. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. Be sure again to come back again tomorrow for another episode, uh, and I will catch you then. So have a lovely night, and I will talk to you later.